Wooden Wisdom, the DJ duo featuring Elijah Wood and Zach Cowie, take the main stage to weave sweet dreams during their 90-minute all-vinyl 45s DJ set. That's actually kind of fucking metal. Hell yeah, Doug. I'm sleepy. Use code promo code I'm sleepy for 10% off your party tickets. Is this oh, how we get only the first 400 people? <gasps> oh, $63. Let's go. I'm Bro, in. don't forget to use limited promo code I'm sleepy for 10% off your party ticket. Do you Wait. see how good we would be at ads, guys? Is there is it just all caps I'm sleepy no apostrophes? That is correct, sir. Yes, sir. Apply promo code. <sighs> oh, I'm one of the first 400. Where did you apply promo code? Uh nowhere, dude. I'm probably 390. Oh, have a promo code. Put it here, bro. No, don't say No. I am sleepy. Fuck. Yo, 10 bucks off. Elijah, I'm coming for your wood. (laughs) (laughs) Yup. Welcome to the Mock Stars Podcast. I am Evan Kunai, one of your hosts, and I'm here with Jordan Garcia. Yo, what up? And Christopher Ritter. Uh, Just give me a second. I'm uh, finishing Jordan's purchase. (laughs) He's making fun of me because I'm still on my phone. (laughs) It's taking me so long to do this. All right, I'm good to go. I'm here. Hello. Jordan's here. The Mock Stars are in full attendance today for an otherwise riveting episode. Uh, Today, we are talking about a couple things. Our pregame action is going to be following up on the splendid secret layer drop. Splendid? Yeah, I I actually love it, so shut up, dude. Spoiler alert. That's all I'm saying, bro. You're giving out the juicy deets up front. And our main subject today will be the top 10 cards that you can draft in Wilds of Eldraine. As determined by the Mock Stars podcast. And RNG. And I RNG, guess. yeah. If, if you yeah, can yeah. draft them. And uh, if you need any credibility, you just need to know that this is the number one podcast on the internet for Magic the Gathering and Dr. Pepper. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so by subscribing to us on YouTube, hitting that thumbs up, and ringing that bell for more notifications. You can follow us on all major podcasting platforms, giving us a five-star review because we're so kick-ass. We're awesome. We rock. I love the confidence Yeah, today. that's great. And you can also join our Discord server mm-hmm. where we're popping off always, always and forever. Off. Yeah. I think you can go to drpepper.com and that redirects to our link tree. <laughs> we, I'm not sure if that's up yet. Yes, we have a link yeah. tree down in the description. I feel like we're on just this yeah. side of getting uh, <laughs> like a season to see. I've, uh, I've sent some emails. <laughs> so. They've also sent some emails back. I just had yeah. to, yeah. I haven't opened them. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know why. We're why doing. would you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it, if you actually go to the Discord server, you can find that there has been a newly created Dr. Pepper channel, which is just people confessing their love for the sweet, crisp Dr. P. Is that real? Do we have a Dr. P channel? Yeah, we do. What the fuck is up? Yeah. We're finally doing something right here at the Mox We're Stars doing podcast. something right. Yes. So let's dive right into it. Let's get this game started. Any pregame actions for you boys? Yes, dude. We are talking about this new secret layer that is absolute gas dude the art across the board is fucking fantastic we actually have real reprints and like cdh reprints cdh I've got cards a hot take yeah hit actually. me it's uh it's splendid it's splendid, yeah, splendid. Ooh, yep. i love that word yep. I, I don't hear that word from real a lot but i love it i haven't heard that word in a while it's been yeah. a minute it's a splendid super drop for sure yeah super duper uh honestly the worst one in my opinion is still not that bad uh i i honestly am not a big fan of the kev walker uh for like oh, uh, calling out by so, name so i i think when you say the worst one um you're saying the worst non-basic land secret layer the, oh the, the yeah <laughs> yes 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 those don't count worst one automatically so Ooh, those, i will those, say out of all the silly ba- secret layer basics this one's pretty cool though it is cool and the artwork's nice but until they give you the option of getting increments of certain, yep. plans, I just don't want one of each. Just, what, are the, what am I going to do with if, that? If they're wondering why their sales are struggling for basic land secret layers, 
here it is. Hi, Wizards. It's because you don't allow us to pick increments of each individual. Guys, let us go a la carte on the basic lands. Yes. Like, or a la carte. Even, even, Beautiful. If, even if you're like, hey, you have to buy the drop of five each, but then you get to go, once you've bought the drop, you can go a la carte and be like, hey, I need 14 islands and I will gladly pay an additional $3 a piece or whatever. Yeah. Like some sort of discounted rate. Um, Your sales would go through the roof. Yeah, for sure. Crazy. Yeah. I do because I will say I fucking love the basic swamp on here. The art on it is just so cute. Yeah, I think that if you showed up and you were playing a deck with with these, or like if you built a draft kit around this, yeah, exactly. You know, but it's like you need ten of each basic to build a draft kit. Yeah, I'm I'm not buying this at thirty dollars for the non foil, and I am not buying these at like ten bucks a pop in the aftermarket. Yeah, uh, just there's just no way. Uh, as is that this product works for me. I mean, I'm a foil yeah. fiend. So like if I'm building the first th thing I think of when I build a like commander deck that is monocolor in actual paper, it's like, well, I got to get all the basic lands foiled out mm. like every single time. And I want them to be the same. So it's like some of these are awesome, but I'm never going to be able to do it. Like, for example, like the, with, go back to the Godzilla Island. Like I always wanted to build a mono blue deck with the Godzilla yeah. Islands. You would never be able to do that because you have to buy all five of them 30 plus times. Yeah, I'm willing to. And those Godzilla lands are like uh, 10 to 15 a piece too. And it's I'm going to buy one of them because it's Godzilla and Godzilla is awesome. But uh yeah, it's it's just a tough ask for to pay that for a basic land, which is something that is basically not basically actually worthless. You can go <laughs> yeah. to any card shop and they will give you as many basic lands remember, free as you want. True. Yeah, remember yeah. that part of the conversation where uh, AJ asked if foil cards are better than non foil cards? You know, it's like they still play the same theoretically in the game but uh you know it's like spiritually you, yeah spiritually they're better but uh technically they're the same so a mm -hmm. one penny basic is going to do the same exact thing as these uh technically eight dollars a piece you know it, it's just the barrier of entry for forty dollars is too high for five basic lands yeah. where if you were to offer me the option of eight dollars a piece you probably see that i'll buy I'd be more willing to buy like 10 of one yeah. because I need that and I'm willing to justify. Yeah, and the other murder out a deck with, with one of them for sure. Yeah, and the, the thing that it also does is it allows people to wiggle with the shipping because they said uh, anything over $99 gets free shipping within the United States. So it's like, you know what? I'll throw a basic land on there. Yeah, you got me. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll throw eight dollars on there. I got yeah, because these sets come in at about 40 bucks for the foils in general. So two of those are at 80 and how do you yes. make up the next, you know, 20 bucks to get the free shipping right. without going over RIP Bob Barker? Yes. Oh, RIP. A national treasure gone. Shout out. Uh, I want to go back to Evan shitting on this one guy's art. Uh, I didn't shit on His entire art. career. No. Uh, so, uh, I it was a bad I said, Evan? no, I said this is just the worst one. And it's not to say that it's bad. It's just the worst one. I'm sorry that I measured it like that. Uh, but it's the Kev Walker one that Evan's talking about <laughs> despising. Uh, I think what is noteworthy here, and it was what Chris and I were discussing, um, is that the playability of all of the cards seems to be, they're starting to think about that a little bit more, right? We're not having yeah. one card that are like, thank God this got reprinted in foil, but it's is it worth $40 to compensate, uh, compensate for the fact that every other card in this set is worthless, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of that, like, look, it's like Fabro Elder, It That Betrays, Carnage Tyrant, Fleshbag Marauder. Like, all playable. All playable. Like, every single one of them. That's gas. Like, or even if you look at the VHS one, where, like, Food Chain is obviously the value there. Rewind is there for flavor. Even... A, a rampant Growth is a pretty good card to be playing, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I... Yeah. I just and, want to say the, the first sliver. sliver. Yeah. For yeah. A hundred percent, which is an expensive card. Yeah. That's like the cost that you're getting uh, for that drop. Like I think the value more than makes up for it. And that's why I'm sitting here considering how many uh, do I just actually for the first time ever buy the all foil bundle. This is the only time I've ever fucking considered it. The only there's time. always like, I'm like, all right, so I'm going to spend $300 on six good cards and then I'm just yeah. going to have a bunch of shit I don't want. Yep. No, this one's like $240 okay. in this case. Yeah. Even the, uh, on 10 good cards even the absolute annihilation one you get that all f all caps foil a braid which is nice the terminate is whatever but oppression has value and so does mass hysteria they're at least like mass hysteria is still like a five or six dollar card for non-foil i mean oppression mm -hmm. sick this is definitely like the coolest of braid art now yeah, yeah. I, I mean uh the baseballing one isn't high on playability like the og walkers 
are, yeah. are just like not playable really no. uh, in any format but they're super the cool. flavor the flavor is, is so excellent. cool yeah like the whole frame and like all the text on the back of the card oh man it looks great someone showed today on reddit that if you if you zoom in on one of the photos that they're advertising you can see that they're all signed so oh, um that's awesome so yeah they have they had had someone like do like signatures for like as if they were like signed by the right. actual baseball player so, mm-hmm. so yeah um, if this was playable walkers it would be a home oh, run what guys get out of here see you next week My this pants. has been at the mock stars podcast thanks for listening y'all don't forget yep. to give us five stars yep. uh okay moving on we're actually talking about <laughs> um this one that i really really like this is just I love seeing like CDH viable cards popping up and I feel mm. like it was always so rare and now we're starting to see a lot more of it. Um, it is, what was it called? Keep partying hard, shred harder than you previously thought possible. Yeah, speaking about playability, this is a four for four. All four of these cards have a home, um, especially in like top tier CDH decks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. dude, I played the Vesh Thought, so the fact that we're getting the sickest Tev art ever I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, Definitely really rad for me. Uh, I'm very hyped to buy this. Uh, and then moving down, we have Godo, Bandit Warlord, which just looks nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Viable Commander, Jessica, Thrice Reborn, Viable Commander, and also we see all the time in the 99. Yep. yep. Um, Vile Smash of the Fierce, paired with tons of partner commanders. Super awesome artwork. Just everything is so like explosive and contrasty. It looks so good. Yeah, and I love that there are four different styles too. So oh, like, yeah, all very yeah. different. Um, and then, you know, I'm excited to see what we start doing for like those bonus cards and all these packs here. Right. Um, even if they're just sketch cards, if I ordered that one and they gave me a sketch Godo, I would be like, okay, that's actually sick. Yeah. Like I, I would be so stoked for that. And, uh, talk about CDH playability. All of these like have at least a little bit somewhere in them. Like I think that, or well, this next one definitely does. But the bugging out, oh my god, drop yeah. is so psychedelic and awesome. It's got Grist, the Hunger Tide, uh, Mazarek, Crawl, Crawl, Death Priest, uh, Eldritch Evolution, Giant Ataphage, unplayable. But then it also has Noxious Revival, which has been a long time coming to get a reprint, and it uh, only has one foil printing where it's a hundred and ten dollars to get one. Oh my god! So yeah, huge reprint. And the art is amazing. And I will say it's not playable for CDH, but Giant Out of Age definitely sees play in like like casual and stuff like oh, that. Oh, it's uh, such a fun card. And it's got such a fun new artwork. It, the, f- the artwork is awesome. Like whoever this artist is, shout out because I love yeah. this stuff. And not only did like I thought I bought for me the coolest Eldritch Evolution and getting that other like that uh, RCQ version. Yeah. Or whatever. Which is great. This one is just so funky and right up my alley. It might it's actually very much your vibe. Re- replace the one that I just bought. So, oh man, it's so good. Yeah, I I love that. Um, we're seeing reprints on cards that were rising in price. Right, they become more accessible, and uh, that's that's always great. But I, I was telling Jordan the other day, I feel like. Um, I know what Wizards is doing now as far as marketing strategy, and they're reprinting high, like uh, high demand cards at such a rate to where it makes buying singles less valuable than it does to buy like retail product from them mm-hmm. at this point. So uh, if it works out for them, great. I think that's awesome. And uh, if we get more products like this that are going to keep giving us high value reprints, I'm all I'm all for it. I mean, I think that works out for the consumer too, right? Because then it mitigates the idea of like, hey, either you're playing stocks or you're just gambling on packs and yes. throwing money away. Like, you know, giving some, you know, losing some value from the stock side, um, but gaining some value on the consumer end for like opening packs, which is probably the majority of the market. I also think that's significantly healthier for the like the player base, yeah. and in addition to being a better business model for the company. So if that is true, then I think that's how we move forward, then I'm actually on board for that. Yeah, yeah this, sure. this food chain, though. I thought I had, like, I do still have, I think the Judge Foil still the best traditional magic artwork out there like the, in my opinion i love that card with the tiger yeah, yeah. and the no, wolf that's a great one um but this food chain is just, just so, so raw so beautiful it's amazing i gotta say uh this one and i think this makes a big difference um it has a dinosaur oh it might oh that might be it that yeah. that's it 
That's sold. exactly it, actually. So sold it. Yep. Sold on this. Sold on pretty much the whole drop. I don't know how much more we can say about it is that this we were really ragging on the last secret layer drop because there was pretty much nothing that we wanted, right? I feel like there was a year of secret layers that I was not interested in. Yeah, this whole... This one makes up for all of that. Yeah, the late part of 2022 into early 2023, nothing. Not a single one that I wanted. I did buy the Grand Abolisher one. Mm -hmm. I regret that. Same, same. You know, and so now I'm sitting here and I'm just like, I'm actually excited for this one. I want to buy this. I'm super excited for it. And it's more than like, you know, the playing the stock side of things like you were talking about. Like just genuinely, these cards are awesome. I already want to play them or play with them. Mm -hmm. And they are by far the coolest art I've ever seen for them. Yeah. There's no element for any of these of like, how bad do I have to feel about spending $40 on a $5 card that I want because it's in foil and has cool art. Right. And exactly. And like with all these reprints, we've seen so many reprints in the last six months of like cards that hadn't really seen reprints. We're seeing how you know, precarious those uh, like stocks, if you'll call them, can be where mm-hmm. you say, you know, you preprint uh, grand whatever abolisher. Yeah, grand yeah. Abolisher. I, think in, I paid in, four, uh, close to thirty five for that for the Magic twenty twelve or twenty fourteen right. or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Printing. It was super yeah. expensive. Uh, this is like a year ago, and now you can get, uh, you know under 10 bucks for a borderless right. version. So yeah, I think we're at the point where we're like, we can't look at this as a viability of like turning a quick dime and stuff like that, but we can look at it as potentially important reprints. And we've mm-hmm. gotten a ton of those recently. So I will give props to wizards on that. That has been a huge push this year. And I will say that out of all of these, if I'm scrolling through and I'm on card kingdom or TCG player, and I'm scrolling through looking to buy these as singles, would I be happy paying $8 for each of these as a single 100%. Yep. And 100%. Yep. Yes. I would 100% pay $8 for this foil food chain. You know, like I would pay or $10 or whatever. I would also pay $10 for the rampant growth and $10 for the rewind. They're that cool. Yeah. And like I keep going down. And I'm just like, yep, I would. Yep. Justified. I would do it. Um, yeah, I think this is a, yeah. a, as you said, a home run of a set. This is, a I banger. only said that about the one secret layer. Yeah, but I'm saying about the whole freaking thing though. No, but uh, I'm saying that one's baseball. Because it's baseball related. Like baseball metaphor. Well, I don't know if you got that layer of it. I, I it. I'm getting it now. Okay. Um, yeah. What if I said it was a slam dunk? I, Evan, you're the sports expert. Is, are we still playing baseball? No. When we say slam? No, no, no you're not. No. Well, what about Michael Jordan? Because if I recall, that's actually a great question. Yeah, Michael Jordan, famous for slam dunks, the MJ clause. Um, yeah, the MJ clause. I I think Jordan's right. Got him technically. Well, well I think he tried. Can to we get do, a judge? He tried to do a slam dunk in baseball, mm-hmm. and then he was so bad at it that mm-hmm. he was forced to retire, and then he had to go back to baseball or basketball. How dare you? Yeah, he had an excellent, yeah. in brief, baseball career. Oh, in the minors. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about all that. I what Space Jam will remind you. Yeah, but um, homie's just not putting respect on the man's name. No, he's I mean, got a he's chip on his shoulder. Great. One what of, is your beef with him? He dominated the Monstars. He is the great. He inspired the Mock Stars. Okay, just yeah. I can't. I can't even. I can't even with you right now. I, I can't, can't with you. I can't compliment him. Okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> All right, we're moving on. I'm pissed hey, off now. Yeah. Hey, Evan, how about you take the main segment? I'm sorry that we dogpiled. You, you. know what? Uh, I would love to. Thanks, thanks, Ritter, for giving me the chance to uh, move this podcast forward. Excellent right. segue. So, do you have a segue? N- yeah, oh, okay. that was it. Oh, sweet. All right, <laughs> wasn't it good? We're moving on <laughs> to the top ten cards for draft in the wilds of El Drain. Yo, that's this freaking weekend, baby. That is this freaking weekend. By the time you guys listen to it, it is this previous right weekend. now. No, it love right now. Oh shit! It'll be right it's tonight. Now. It's tonight. tonight. Get there. Be there. Well, you should listen to this real quick so you know exactly what you need to draft which cards to see if you see them in your first pack these are the cards that you're going to want to grab because they are going to win you games there are a few different classifications of cards through draft i forgot what they all are but we all know that the bombs are what you want you want cards that have a significant impact on the game when they hit the battlefield or just when you cast them in general you know when you open packs and you see a card that seems awesome and there is no way you would ever play that in constructed now's your time beautiful yep draft so let's get started this is the top 10 cards of draft in Wilds of Eldraine, as determined by the Mock Stars podcast. So if they're really right bad, we'll play Evan, though. Uh, who made the list? 
I, no, I said if it was really bad, I'm just going to blame you, though. Oh, okay. I think Michael Jordan made the list. The greatest of all time. Yeah. 100%, so it can't be wrong. Just slap-shotted it right in there. <laughs> all <ten of> <laughs> <laughs> all right number 10 uh, we're talking about the song of totentons x and a red sorcery create x11 black rat creature tokens with this creature can't block creatures you control gain haste until end of turn well yeah Same sound good. scales up yeah, exactly. And that's why I put it at number 10. There were a few other cards that were like vying for this spot. And I felt like this is just the one that uh, scales has a higher ceiling than the rest of them. And mostly because it has X and same doesn't rely on any other circumstances around it to help you win the game. So later in the game, we know these these draft games, pre-releases and everything like that these games get dragged out. This one creates X creatures, X one one rat creature tokens that also feed your bargain claws because exactly yep, it says artifact enchantment or token so uh you can feed your bargain spells with this tokens you, that you create here and it also gives your creatures hey so for one red mana we've seen like crash through crash through was a great draft card at common uh that said you know creatures you control gain trample draw card this allows you to either one win the game through a ton of mana or two help you win the game by giving your creatures haste that just entered the battlefield this turn or feeding your bargain claws. Wait, it gives so, all creatures haste? Yeah, all creatures. You can oh, she, I did not realize that. That card's actually a little bit better. Yep. Yeah, I'll take that. So uh, pretty great, pretty great card. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, because that means like not only does it have a good ceiling, but it actually has a pretty good floor. Yeah, uh, and even if you just cast it for X is one, you create a one one with haste. That yeah, whatever your strategy is, and whatever turn you're on, right. I think this is a big or it or it's a counter threat activation. Yeah. Or just you cast a creature, pay one red, give it haste. Right? Yeah, it's essentially haste. And it's it's kind of wild because um, there are like there are going to be opportunities for everyone in draft to build the rat deck. Mm-hmm. Like there are a lot of rat cards here, mm-hmm. so this is something that uh, if you have rat lords or something like that, this is going to help feed that. Totally, it doesn't more. even. This is not even talking about all the payoffs and stuff right now. Right, lords and everything. Just standalone. Yeah, it, it's great. It's, yeah. it's a really great card. Number nine, Mosswood Dread Knight. One in a green oh, human, this one. yeah, human knight. It has an adventure side on it called Dread Whispers. One in a black sorcery. You draw a card and lose one life. And if you don't know how adventures work, after you cast the adventure side, it goes into exile, and then you can cast it uh, whenever t- you can meet timing restrictions. Right. So, um, its creature side says it's a three-two with trample. When uh, Mosswood Dread Knight dies, you may cast it from your graveyard as an adventure until the end of your next turn. And the reason that I chose this as number nine is because it being a three two trample, the two, the adventure and the cost of the creature, it is undercosted uh, as a creature. So one in a green for three two trample and the ability to draw a card and lose a life off this whole thing for four mana. You always have the ability to draw a card, lose a life, and have a 3-2 trample on the battlefield. Because you're allowed to, as you said, as he's in the graveyard, you're allowed to cast the adventure side of it. Yes, and so it goes back into exile for you to cast again. Yeah, I love that it's not like a flashback card where you exile it after the resolution of the flashback and stuff like that. It actually just kind of goes into this cycle. of It's, it's a single card engine. Yes. It's actually amazing. Yeah, so it allows you to draw cards, you lose life, but it also, if you're playing food, which green and black is going to do a lot of in this set, it is just, yeah, like you said, a single card engine that keeps the clock on your opponent. And if you if you pick this out, even if you uh, aren't playing like black or whatever, it's still valuable because you're probably creating some treasure tokens somewhere along the way mm. in here too. So you can eventually cast it and it gives you a huge opportunity window of opportunity it says you may cast it from your graveyard as the adventure until the end of your next turn so if someone jump blocks it and it dies it until the end of your next turn you can recast it yeah so, that's great or or you just, just throw it into combat knowing that you're just going to keep it going yes which yeah. means you're either pressuring life totals or killing blockers and you're threatening your opponents with card draw yeah exactly. so it's like they don't want you to get cards so are they going to block it or are they just going to take the three yeah it's a lot on one card i think it's really good what's the yeah. rarity yet it's a rare. It's a rare. Yeah. So that's that's also like something in consideration here is that um, I did pick a couple cards that are not rares, and you'll be surprised at how effective that they they're seem. above this guy. They're, <laughs> yeah. they're above this, yeah. right? Uh, number eight. It is 
Lord Skidder, the Sewer King. Hey, speaking of rat lords. hey yo. Yeah, I think this card's great. It's two and a black for a legendary creature, Rat Noble. 3-3. Three, three. Uh, whenever another rat enters the battlefield under your control, exile up to one target card from an opponent's graveyard. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token with this creature can't block. So we all love Bitter Blossom. That's also available in this set, but it's not. You do will have the opportunity to draft it, but it does not qualify for this. Um, but Lord Skitter is another version of that that's going to give you those rats, those rat tokens to help you bargain. He is just a bargain mm -hmm. engine that allows you to just keep the wheels turning, turn in, turn out, and threaten your life totals. If you guys played Phyrexia All Will Be One, you'll know that making those little mite tokens that can't block but have toxic one really puts so the, good. Yeah. Put the clock. Even like expanding outside of like a draft format, like what those did for like other formats, like Myrex as a land in multiple like 1v1 formats. Yep. It is crazy good. So this like, yeah, I think that this being able to create tokens once per turn is actually going to be like not only in draft, this is a great card for draft because as long as you can keep it on the battlefield, you are yeah. styling. And it's two bodies instead of like a bitter blossom just, you know, waiting to the upkeep to make you one body. Yeah. So there, there are options, you know, like, uh, like I said, bolstering your rat strategies and stuff like that. But when it stands alone on its own, uh, you are interacting with your opponent's graveyard, which is incredibly valuable. If you look at all the cards that are in this set, there's a lot of graveyard recursion yeah. and a lot of effects that say when this hits the graveyard, do this thing. You know, when I draft, it seems like it's not one thing I'm always thinking about is people messing with my graveyards and stuff because I only have like maybe two cards, but when somebody plays graveyard removal or grave hate like in draft it ruins me sometimes it's really good and your deck doesn't have the, it yeah. yeah and your deck doesn't have the answers to come back from it yeah. so it's very good and notably this counters the mosswood dread knight so exactly yeah. especially with this set there's gonna be lots of good stuff that you want to get rid of yeah there's a few engines that you can just stop there's yeah. a lot of recursion there's actually i was looking through and there's like four or five ways to like bring creatures back straight from the graveyard to the battlefield oh so, that is a very good effect yeah uh, number seven, Ritter is going to love this one because I chose Warehouse Tabby. Uh, Warehouse it's, Tabby. It's funny that um, a lot of these cards have Crate Rats. I think that's probably the most powerful mechanic. Black is mm -hmm. going to be the, the strongest color here. But it is one black mana for a 1-1 one, one cat. Uh, Warehouse Tabby says, whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token uh, with this creature can't block. You can pay one in a black. Warehouse Tabby gains death touch until end of turn. I think that wow. you need to be able to round out your like your curve like throughout the game. This might be a one drop, and it's, it's a common. This is a crazy good one drop. Yeah, yeah. it's a crazy good one drop. That's also a common that you're going to probably be able to get two, three, maybe even four copies of. And there's a few lines wow. of rules text in the set that actually make this go crazy. All of those roles, right? They specifically state on them that if you are attaching a role to a creature, sacrifice the original role and attach this to it, which is an enchantment. Which is an enchantment. That is oh, beautiful. Oh, okay. Whenever yeah. an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a one-one black rat. So every time you have a role and then you create a role, create a rat, new role. Yes. Just keep this engine feeding on yep. a one mana creature. Exactly. It's giving me some culture familiar vibes for sure. Yeah, and so you're creating more tokens that you can also like the yeah bargain. You know, mm -hmm. it's probably yeah the most powerful mechanic that we're gonna see. Yeah, like, there's there's it's kind of a weird thing like the whole like enchantment going to graveyard thing. But when you really look at the set, not only is all there all that, but then each color has its own enchantment that is meant to be sacrificed. Yeah, it has a, a leave the ability, a leave the grave. Uh, battlefield ability and it has a sacrifice ability attached to them yeah i think i think you're looking to exploit those roll tokens yeah with this card in draft mm -hmm. honestly I, I did not realize those are all enchantments that actually makes that so much better yeah and there are some like uh roles like the wicked roll it uh makes it so that whenever uh the creature that dies with the wicked roll uh goes to the gray or whenever it dies each opponent loses one life and so you can sort of like hold your opponent's life totals hostage with these be like i'm gonna swing and block it i'll create a rat you know, you'll lose one life because the enchantment went to the graveyard like type thing. So yeah. it's 
uh it's kind of it's kind of wild plus just the added ability of having the activated ability here where it's like warehouse tabby gains death touch until end of turn by paying one in a black yeah it's so good huge for the blocking ma- like you like you said scaling right so like later in the game all of a sudden you have two open man up and now they can't swing their you know their four four at you their game at winning creature at yes. you because you have a little one mana death toucher yeah for yeah it's just I like i can't tell you how often that like stops you it, yeah removals at a premium like combat tricks are at a right. premium and drafts yes. and but it, death touch blockers right are of card you're doing yeah exactly yeah. yeah so that's number seven uh number six i like this because it actually plays into a different strategy it's called woodland acolyte and here it is. It is. Uh, it has an adventure, but it is two and a white human cleric, 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Its adventure is Mend the Wilds, an instant for one green mana. Put target permanent card from your graveyard on top of your library. Yeah, that's pretty rad. Like the flexibility here, which is, is why I chose it. And that the instant speed adventure makes this so good, mm-hmm. right? Upkeep. Put that card on top of my from my graveyard on top of the library. I'm going to draw that this turn. Um, in my main my main my main phase, so it's like if I'm not really looking to do that or whatever, it's like I can use the adventure and then also cast the card to have this enter the battlefield and pick that card up. So like main phase two, I need that stacks piece that my opponent removed at instant speed with whatever piece of removal they got. You can actually. Use it to draw the card. Use it to draw the card. That is very cool. That's what a what a unique piece of like recursion. Yeah. I really like that. I really think they did a great job with this new cycle of like two color uh, adventures where we have different typings on them, where we have like an instant and a creature and yep, stuff like mixing that. Mixing it up. Yeah. And not only like in addition to that, I think they made them more powerful almost. Like I feel like the abilities are pushed for how cost it, how fairly costed they are right like if you look at the mosswood dread knight and you look at this like the other uh like adventures but in the old eldraine they were pretty minimal effects it was just mm-hmm. notable that you had it in addition to a permanent type and that's yeah. why bone crusher was so freaking good yeah, because, bone crusher was good because was, both sides were pretty decent exactly yes. but now we're seeing a bunch of cards where both sides are very good yeah so i'm interested to see how that how that you know affects you know multiple formats mm-hmm. and yeah i think that one of the things when you play draft or when you play pre-release is that there aren't a lot of cards that uh interact with the stack or allow you to play uh at you know use your game knowledge to its maximum potential and that card i think does it allows you to finagle the like the phases and steps of the game to be able to get you the card draw like so draw trigger on the stack i'm going to put that on top and i'm going to get that card and now i have a three mana draw card whenever i want you yeah know? So yeah, there's a, a lot of a flexibility body. on it, like you said, too. And sometimes just body into draw a card like Spirit Companion is a card that people play all the time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, next card. Number five. Sleep Cursed Fairy. I chose this. It's a one blue mana three three flying ward two fairy wizard. Sleep Cursed Fairy enters the battlefield tapped with three stun counters on it. You can pay one in a blue untapped Sleep Cursed Fairy. Stop. I think yeah. if you're trying to win games, that's the thing is that a card does not need to be complex. Oftentimes downsides can seem not as impactful like this. They're trying to say this card is a three, three flyer for one mana, but it has ward two, which is what all another reason why I chose it because targeted, targeted removal, having to pay a premium on that sometimes makes or breaks the game, but one in a blue untap. That has proven to be an incredible, like Glimmer, Glimmer Bell or whatever that card was from Ikoria. Just like having the ability to swing in with something and then at instant speed, untap it as a combat trick, like you said, are at it like it's not something that's very common. So these cards that have these instant speed activated abilities that allow you to catch your opponent off guard or for whatever reason is uh, just way more valuable than a lot of the other abilities that these other cards in the set have right it's a three three right yeah okay three but, three flyer but the, the two stun counters on it so you essentially have to tap it three times untap it As three times three stun counters three stunners yeah stun so counters. i mean you, it feels like a good tempo play to me too because you can yeah. just drop it turn one and then spend your time like 
you know, affecting your opponent's board state or, you know, drawing cards or whatever. And then it's just ready for you when you're ready to take over. Yeah, totally. Like with your saying this combat trick, like I could see a world where you just like pass with four mana up and one stun counter left and they like haven't thought about it, right? Like it's still a ways out. Swing in. I was like, all right, four mana, two, untap it, stun counter gone, two, untap it, kill it. Yep. Like, and then you have a three, three flyer with ward two is pretty insane. That's going to win the game. That wins draft. games. Yeah. yeah. So if you can get around the one small hurdle, Here's the thing. Stun counters are not removed at your upkeep. They are removed when a creature would become untapped. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. yeah, you pay one in the blue and you actually remove the stun counter. Yeah. 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 That's exactly. kind of crazy. Yeah. So like if you have, like I said, if you have four mana up, you know, yeah, you one just, counter, you're just like, they're not going to see it coming necessarily. And that is a really good gotcha moment. That'll make you feel smart at the draft table is what I'm saying. Right. You'll and, feel good about yourself. Yeah. It's another one of those things where it's like, uh, the interactions like you can actually like wiggle with it a little bit yeah i mean i just these kind of awesome little tidbits the small little abilities are actually things that just like benefit good players and smart plays and like heads up you know building all right number four virtue of loyalty this is a three white white enchantment also has an adventure but the enchantment says at the beginning of your end step put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control untap those creatures the adventure is Arden Vale fealty one in a white instant create a two two white knight creature token with vigilance i really like this card for more than just draft but this one is a mythic so it you are going to have to be very lucky to get it um it just wins the game one in white for is the sorcery for the night yes okay and then it's five mana for the yeah for thing. the for the enchantment yeah, yeah yeah so i really like this because putting plus one plus one counters on things in draft creatures are king as we know and this just builds and bolsters that like that mentality yeah right not only are creatures king but stat lines are king you know a three yeah. four decimates a three three yeah so the second you start putting a plus one plus one counter on anything that math changes instantly right and then uh like let's say you're playing blue white for whatever reason you do happen to get the sleep curse fairy and you get this it's like oh sweet i'm actually removing two stun counters a turn and then it's actually a faster clock and it's getting a plus one plus one counter so now it becomes you know a four four with ward two flying in ward two five five flying ward two yeah. you know? seems good so I really, really like this kind of really hope that I, I pull it and I'm able to play with it at some level in draft because it is the definition of a like a high costed bomb. Yeah, it seems like it'd be fun to play in, in like casual commander. Like, you know, I think of like Cathar's Crusade and Felid Arbitrate might be like a little better for those. Yeah. But it's still fun. Yeah. And there is a downside. I won't deny that there this is just all upside. Um it intentionally gives you the adventure so you will have a creature for this to bolster. Now, if your opponents are heavy on removal or you're not able to put a lot of creatures down, the impact of this card goes way down. Right. Because if you have no creatures through some right. sort of board wipe, which there's only one mm -hmm. in the set, there's, yeah. Um, it's it's a win more effect if, you know, if they stick their finger in. Yeah, it helps you push over the top if, you know, a game slogs or gets you know slows down they've been really good at being able to create a tempo at which the games go mm -hmm. so you know maybe last uh 10 8 to 10 turns but uh, you know so if you put this on turn five and you are right on curve and you have two creatures out i think those two creatures remain the rest of the game unless you're met with some form of resistance i think there is a deck there where this thrives and it maybe isn't in draft but it's the white weenies deck and you see it in lots of different formats and yep. you end up with a bunch of weenies that are small tiny little creatures that do something and then they're all over the battlefield and this makes one of those a pretty good one because it's two two with vigilance and then it gives you your win condition stapled to it just sitting in exile when you're ready for it yeah that's usually what like weenie decks like even mono red has trouble at times just like having impact with later plays yeah going over the top in the late game yeah and this this helps with mo with the mono white weenies yeah I, I, yep. I definitely could see like i can definitely see this being in some deck like that somewhere Awesome. Number three, Elvish Archivist. I love this card. I touted it when it was spoiled. It is a one green elf artificer, zero one. Whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, put two plus one plus one counters on Elvish Archivist. This ability triggers only once each turn. Whenever one or more enchantments enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This ability only 
uh, t- or triggers only once each turn. God, with those roll abilities now. Food tokens are artifacts, and yeah, roll are. tokens are enchantments. That yes, is very, are. very, very cool. Yeah, so it actually plays really well. It doesn't, as long as you're playing green, every other color that you pair with this is going to give it some sort yeah. of benefit. I love that they made a card that just supports all of the new mechanics in the new set. Like, mm-hmm. just yep. like, it is the the grease for your deck. Yeah, it, it has all, all of it. Yeah, all yeah, of the yeah. All at once, just like, put this card in the deck. Yeah, uh, so let's say you have one food token to enter the battlefield. It immediately becomes a 2-3. Yeah. Like, there are some, like, there are some cards in the in this set that are like, Spend one mana, create one food. And then this card just goes, oh. Two, three, beats yeah. a two, two. Yep. And it's a one mana card, no? It's two mana. Two one mana, in, I mean, one yeah. in a green. It have card draw on it. If it was yeah. one mana, it had that crazy. enchantment yeah, thing. Fair enough. Crazy. <laughs> that would have been number one for sure. Yeah. Uh, so this is a crazy card. I think that it doesn't need much more explanation just because of how good it is, how good it reads. Like you said. Sounds the roll, good when you read it. The roll tokens. <laughs> yeah. Enchantments, draw a card. It, yeah. It explains itself. Uh, card draw is good. Uh, Ritter, you're actually going to love this one too. This is my number two card. Kellen, the Fae Blooded. Oh, is this the, uh, it has an adventure half that searches for an equipment? It does. Or an aura. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. Okay. It is two and a red, human fairy, and it it's adventure side, birthright boon, one in a white, sorcery, search your library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Open the armory, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then the creature side is a 2-2 two, two double strike. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus oh for each aura and equipment attached to Kellen the Fey Blooded. God, this is like one of the best equipment cards printed in a long time. I read it again because I was like, ah, it can't be that good. It is a mythic. So again, you're going to have to get lucky to yeah. get it. But it is one of the biggest bombs because it is so low on curve. Mm-hmm. It comes out early and it just wipes your opponent off the face of the earth. Yep. Yeah. Finds and the, the equipment you need the is double on strike. board before you cast the you know creature you're going to equip right. with yeah. it. And then it like pumps the other stuff you've been doing all along. It's the double strike plus being a lord for everything else just goes crazy. Yeah, you put the young hero roll on this, and it attacks once, and it's a 3-3 three, three double strike. Like That wins games. Yep. And then all of a sudden, all of your other creatures get the plus one, plus oh, because it has oh, an aura attached to it. There are not that many equipments in the set. There are a few out there, so you can like bolster this strategy a little bit more, but... I think the aura is probably going to be where where you're shining. Yeah, there are a few more auras out there, uh, especially in white and uh, in red. So like uh, ones that like give like first strike, you mm-hmm. know, stuff like yep. that. So uh, you can keep pumping him up. You can keep making your other biggest creature. Uh, it's like shared animosity a little bit, plus X plus whatever for each thing. So uh, I think it's incredibly powerful. It's going to win a lot of games. It's going to come down early and you're going to want to protect it. Uh, I'm just I want to say why I'm excited about this card outside of draft and it is exactly what Chris said it's an open the armory in the command zone if you play commander a a commander or a command zone tutor for any aura or equipment is just that's new territory that's yeah, and, awesome and so with adventure um on there when it goes back to the command zone you don't have to pay the command tax when you recast the adventure half right and you can still cast no you still do you will anytime it returns like even it's Every all year. red on the same card oh because cast. it's on the same card yeah yes. but my question is you cast it from as the adventure right it goes into exile not the command zone if you choose which allows you to then cast your creature half for the, the same command. cost so it would just be three mana so if you paid the additional tax you can cheat you can cheat uh command so this awesome. feels like a powerful yeah. commander to me because it is that tutor, which is amazing, on yeah. two, and then a creature on three. Like, yeah. it feeds a really aggressive curve, and like being able to guarantee that every game, I think, is very cool. Yeah, and even if you are to pay the tax on the open and the armory effect, right, the second time you pay it, it's only four mana. That actually isn't that bad for that type of effect, as long as you're getting the card that you need mm-hmm. to like win the game, push your game plan forward, and yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> it seems yeah. no it's a, it's a home run bad. yeah right that's yeah. pretty insane like like I, for Rocco they make you pay Naya before you get to tutor anything right so yep. like this is pretty damn good yeah, yeah. and um, does it compete with Godot by like being able to no. get that reach of white effects you know you get to throw silence and worms chant in your deck and no because Godot wins the game by itself yeah. Godot is a one card win condition yeah the treason but, ogre Stuff like that. I will say, I think this is significantly more fun and interesting, though. Mm-hmm. I think this could, this card, I might even build it. I think it's very cool, the way they built it. Yeah. 
Uh, I'll let you go. Number one. The best card that you can possibly draft in Wilds of Eldraine is... Hot take here. Agatha's Soul Cauldron. That's a good card. It is two mana for a legendary artifact. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. Creatures you, creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. You may tap Agatha's Soul Cauldron, exile target card from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled this way, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. The reason that I think this is the most powerful card, not only in draft, but potentially for other formats as well, um, the ability, one, to mess with your opponent's graveyard, deny them strategy, grave strategies, putting plus one plus one counters on your creatures, as we talked about with stat lines, is not nothing. All the other cards have required some sort of color devotion to it. And this also goes into consideration because you don't need any color devotion to this whatsoever. It's mm-hmm. so many words for two mana, for two, two colorless mana. Also, uh, the restriction isn't the plus one, plus one counters are put on with Agatha's, Agatha's Soul Cauldron. So any creatures you have with plus one, plus one counters through any effect now get those abilities as yes. well. And like it is notable to say that like Agatha also exists in the set and she is a red green legendary creature that says that uh, activated abilities cost X less for X is her power. She's a one one and then also has four red and a green that says creatures you control gain plus one plus one and and trample I think until end of turn. So Mm -hmm. you know like drafting the two in tandem she's only a rare so like there is a chance that you know the stars align and you're able to make this happen but when that doesn't happen, this card still goes off. It's still yeah. just turn after turn after turn. Creatures are king. Like there are more creatures in opponent's decks or in your deck that are then other types of cards. Regardless of what you do, you need creatures to win, usually to usually to win the game in draft. So uh, this comes down for two mana, starts interacting early if you have discard abilities or if you have... Um, some way to sacrifice. I think that with uh, the the tabby, even if you were to put a plus one, drop your one drop, and then play this and exile something and put a plus one plus one on your tabby, you are you're well on your way to win in this game. I think it's gonna be pretty crazy. So it also puts a plus one plus one counter on it, right? You tap it, you exile a card. If it's a creature, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. Yes. And then creatures you control that plus one plus one counters on it have the activated abilities of everything you've exiled. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's just really fucking good. Like, there's no way around that. It's just, it's just yeah. Well, even if it was two mana, tap this artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature, that'd be really, really good. Yep. Like, if it's, it's Grave Hate and it's so much more on top of that, like, I could see this breaking other formats, like, or being a combo in other formats, right? Because we see it all the time. If you're able to give a creature with maybe a, a, the huge downside is in the graveyard, but you get the activated ability. You yeah, know. there's necrotic ooze. Lines. Exactly. There's That's the, what I'm thinking. Uh, not Emotech the Stormlord, but the other Necron dynasties. Uh, yeah, the mono black guy, right? Uh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe this goes right in that deck. Like, it's yep. kind of almost redundancy. That is an artifact. Like, it's two mana, and like, outside of draft, as we're kind of talking about now with it, like this card has so much potential for the other line of text we're not even talking about, and that's that you can activate abilities um, as like any color. Yeah, spend yeah. mana of any color. Uh, hello, yep. put this in Sisse. It's a legendary artifact for two mana. Yep. You have a one plus one effect, so she gets or a one color on the battlefield, right? So she has a three power. Grab this. Now it's five generic mana. Feed it in and then just go off. So that is huge gas. I went through and I was sort of like... By the way, it taps to put a plus one plus one counter. Yeah, yeah. In like... I think it, it actually, sorry, I just realized it makes up for the fact that it doesn't have a counter for when you tutor for her. Yes. Right. Because you always want to tutor for the color. So you make her bigger, but then you tap it. Fuck. Yeah. It's that good. It's so good. It's that good. Yeah. All right, I'm so, done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the big reason that I was like even thinking about this as being number one, I kind of built the list backwards. I started with number seven. I went up and then I started and then I added eight, nine, ten. And uh, when I was going through i was just like how many pieces of artifact removal are actually in this set there's not a lot no <laughs> yep. like, i mean there's another card that i think might even have a home in cc i don't know if it's as good but the iron craig yeah is as an equipment yeah oh that's right that's right because yeah, it, it's a mana that, rock equipment. it's it's two mana it's legendary it it uh adds you can tap it for colorless Mm-hmm. But when a legendary creature enters your or a legendary creature or a permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you can have it become an equipment that grants plus three plus three. Yeah, and equip for uh, three. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so I think that's very versatile. I don't know if it's quite powerful enough for Cisse, but it's another card that is just like, oh, this is very good, and I would be very happy to have this in any deck. I yeah. mean, it's a two-mana mana rock with like a huge upside. You know, if that upside works for your deck, I definitely think it's worth yeah. considering for sure. Yeah, if, if like, hey, if you want to sacrifice one of your other two mana rocks for that one because you're a creature-based strategy, and this is will give you more upside than, say, Mind Stone or something. Yeah, I was know? wondering. Uh, yeah, it... it uh, it sucks that the Iron Craig doesn't give ward of any type. That would just be really way too good. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like a ward two or something. Yeah, amazing. it would just be busted. Um, but yeah, Agatha Soul Cauldron. It's a card I'm super excited for. I really think it's going to have influence here in draft. You're going to see it on Arena. You should take it with your first pick because it's going to do so much work for you. It's pre-ordering around twenty too. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. And I and we pay for your draft. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we're already talking. Yeah, it pays for your draft, and we're already talking about how effective it's going to be in other formats. So, with all of the you know one ring decks out there, it might even have impact in modern because it you know after you go to discard, you draw so many cards or whatever, you can get rid of some lines of strategy is sitting in the graveyard. So we'll see. I think yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, I, I'm like I said before, we saw anything about uh, Eldrain, and I still feel it now. I'm excited to see how the set affects the meta pretty much across the board in all different formats. I was super surprised by like how prevalent I saw Eldraine become uh, like months, even to a year after it being out. And I think we'll see a lot more of this set also permeate. Yeah. Uh, like I'm wondering, cause uh, like looking at pre-order prices, like Tally and the kindly Lord, you can get the basic version for under $5. And mm. I feel like that's going to be a card that's going to have like a huge presence. Oh, yeah. I'm building that deck yeah. for sure. Oh, and a lot, I think, in multiple, yeah, like standard and, and pioneer, I think that card's going to have influence. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, honorable mention, I didn't say it before, but Sir Ginger is also an amazing card. Sir Ginger, just, oh, the flavor in this set is fantastic. Yeah. I've been enjoying it so much. I really want to draft the Donut Monster. Yes. Um, I don't know the name off the top of my head. Donut but Monster. Yeah. It's Donut Monster. You'll no, see I, it. You'll know it when you see it. The Adventure Lord, the the Giantess. I, f I forget that's called. Oh, that, yeah. That seems well, fun. Teamer, too. Commander, yeah. Yeah, a lot of like fun uh, lower power commanders worth playing. And then people at the higher end of the power spectrum are talking about Rowan, uh, Rowan Siren of War. Um, already on Reddit, people are saying like, "Hey, I've been playtesting this. This actually has some some legs." Yeah, gas. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you need like the life loss to be that huge. That discount, like you tap her after losing three life, which say you play Tarnish uh, Citadel, Bingo. Uh, Shocklands. You. Yeah, yep. so many ways. Yeah, to fetch into life. a shock, yeah. tap it. Now your uh, ad nauseum costs two black mana. Yeah, yep. you know, yeah, kind of. It's crazy. like that is insane. Anyway, this has been the top ten draftable cards as determined by the mock stars podcast if you'd like to support the show you can do so by joining our discord community and popping off on there we're talking about dr pepper we're talking about the number one podcast on the internet the talking stars about michael podcast. jordan michael jordan talking about Saboba sometimes yeah yeah he, uh they're both part of the discord community you can talk yeah. to both <laughs> give them a shout out uh they're both there at open to you're totally gonna get sued at some point <laughs> Uh, you can also subscribe. You can subscribe to us on YouTube uh, with a thumbs up and uh, hit that bell for more notifications. And uh, follow us on all major podcasting platforms. Last thing before you go, we're going to the freaking Vegas, baby. We got to talk about it. I'm hyped. We were talking about it before we started recording. So much gas. We are going to be there all weekend for Magic Con. Please come say hi. We actually have a freaking table. We are content creators, baby. We're going to be jamming some games. We're going to be jamming games. We already had some homies from uh, up in Seattle coming down. So if you want to come say hi, play some games. We're going to bring casual decks. We're going to bring CDH decks. Uh, and then we're just going to be around hanging out and uh, having an awesome time. We're going to see freaking Frodo DJ, bro. Yo, I'm uh, so excited. Friday's business day. Saturday is partying with Elijah Wood. Party your face off. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to be at that slumber party. We uh, we just got tickets. We're super stoked to see Elijah Wood DJ a set. It's going to be sick. It's going to be yeah. so sick. Yeah, we're stoked. Um, just had to get that out there. Yeah. Yes, it is worthy to get out there. You know those hobbits party. Like, oh, man. It's all Bilbo's birthday. <laughs> like, that <laughs> shit was lit. I want to see how these freaking magic nerds party, dude. I want to see these, like, Vegas after hours parties. What is going yes, on? Yes, sir. 
uh what else what else are we doing we're well we're gonna be at pax this weekend too uh just sort of wandering the the, the floors on will saturday will we sign autographs at pax if they oh, people see us i'll even sell people mats not officially up. but not officially but we will have merch with us i'll just walk around the sharpie just signing shit for people oh you should yep and we got some really <laughs> cool things that coming down the pipe hopefully we'll have uh some new products from the mock stars podcast available before we get to magic con and if we do we'll be sure to let you know Thank you guys so much for listening to the Mock Stars podcast. We'll catch you later. Deuces. Bye.